Okay. Next up is Case Study, How a Cause Changed a Company. We have Kathleen Griffith, Managing Director of McGarry Bowen. Kristen Brandt, Co-Founder and Director of International Operations at She's the First. And Marina Marr, CEO of Marina Marr Communications. Please join me in welcoming them. So I just have to say, this absolutely rocks. We are here and we're starting a, a she revolution. So welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. We've got a panel today entitled uh, Women and Social Marketing, How a Cause Changed a Company. I'm Kathleen Griffith. I'm Managing Director of Creative Ad Agency McGarry Bowen. And with me here today is Marina Marr, the Founder and Chief Executive Officer of PR Agency Marina Marr Communications. I've had the good fortune of knowing Marina for many years now, and she is just an absolute force in the world of marketing to women. Uh, so honored to be here with you today. You. I'm also joined by Kristen Brandt, who is the co-founder of uh, She's the First, which is an incredible organization dedicated to helping women be the first in their families to graduate from high school in the developing world. And what I love so much about what we're going to share today is the fact that not only are you two women incredibly powerful in your own right, you care about causes, and you're deeply committed to making causes part of your work. You actually fundamentally believe that's part of doing good business. Um, so the case that we'll take you guys through today a little bit, I think we're going to go a little deeper and I think this has relevance to anyone who is just starting out in their career incredibly well established you know even in the c-suite if you're a solopreneur if you're an entrepreneur when you can identify a cause and align behind that cause there's tremendous power in being able to not only affect your own world but the world around you as these two ladies found out when their organizations teamed up together um, so I'd love to dive into that a little bit more. Kristen, first with you, just to talk a little bit about She's the First and how it came to be with your co-founder, Tammy Tibbetts. How and, and why did you decide to uh, found this organization? Yeah, so when Tammy and I began She's the First, I was actually still in college and Tammy was just out. So we're in the stage of life that defines millennials in so many ways, where we were both so interested in the cause of girls' education. But what we found was that there were so few ways to get involved in it. And so we realized, you know, millennials may not be able to write a $500 check, certainly we couldn't, but we had these intense networks, right, through social media and in, in person, in real life. And so if we could use those networks to get together <laughs> and to effect change, to get behind a cause, then we had something. So She's the First was born of this idea that millennials might not be able to write the check, but they can certainly get together and create change. And so that's the whole idea behind She's the First, that millennials can get together, work together, and make change that way. MMC's just celebrated its 30th anniversary, and I'm sure you've aligned. <laughs> clap, let's clap for that. That's something special. And I'm sure you've aligned with causes before, but what made this special? What made this different? And how did it align with the brand? So, you know, we at Marina Mar Communications really believe in giving back. That's very much part of our DNA. So over the years, we've done things with Habitat for Humanity. We've gone into New York City schools, repainted them, refurbished playgrounds. And everybody loved it. Everybody said, oh, this is great. But the real measure, nobody ever said to me, are we going to do it again next year? This is what I want to do. I'm going to sign up now for next year. And so we began to think maybe what we're doing is a little, it's good, but it isn't us. It isn't us enough. And our 30th anniversary was coming. And we thought, let's plan something special. And we heard about She's the First. And Tammy came to speak to us. And a whole group of millennials in the agency had the meeting with Tammy. We're a marketing to women agency. We're 90% female workforce out of 140 people. And over 60% of our staff is millennials. 
And what people loved about She's the First is exactly your DNA of empowering young women is our DNA. Because when I started in the business years ago, there wasn't anything about empowering women. I got passed over for job after job after job because they said, well, you're going to get married, you're going to go have a family, and why should we train you? So I wanted to make it different for our company. And by teaming up with She's the First, we were able to help young women in Uganda go to school. And that was critically important. We knew that for every $400 we raised as a company, we would send a whole group of women to school. Can you just talk a little bit more specifically about exactly how the partnership unfolded within the organization and how the women participated? Sure. Um, you, know, you know that you're doing something wonderful when everyone is passionate about it. And one of the keys to the success of the program was everybody got excited. Whether you worked in account management, you were in the finance department, HR, everybody felt, gee, I have a shot, I can contribute, I can do something. So our goal was originally, because it was our 30th anniversary, to raise enough money to send 30 young women to school. We actually raised $25,000 and we sent 43 young women to school. So it's really... Thank you, because we loved it. They, it, was, it was fabulous. And the key was people did different things to raise money. Because, you know, sometimes as women, we have trouble asking for things. We have trouble asking for a raise. We have trouble asking for a promotion. And originally, some of the people in the office said, well, I, I've never done fundraising. I, I've never asked for anything. How do I do it? But people use their social media networks to get things that they could raffle off or auction off at the office. Somebody got this fabulous Badgerly and Mishka handbag and auctioned that off at the office. Um, somebody else who was in our accounting department who didn't have a very big social media network and is more of an introvert um, raised a lot of money by finding friends who had connections, who could do things. And her boss actually is great at knitting and so she convinced her boss to do a knitting class in the agency, and you had to pay a fee to sign up to do it. All I can tell you is that year, I saw more six-foot scarves in the office than you can imagine. <laughs> Seems to me everybody knit a multicolored scarf for somebody in their life. But that was, that was what was wonderful about it is everybody had a different way to do it. So Pew Research just came out with a study which says that for millennials, the third most important thing for them is actually helping others. And yet, we hear a lot about how there's this conflict, whether you're a millennial or not, between cause and the work that you do. I'd love to ask both of you, do you think that you are mutually exclusive? And if not, what advice would you give to a woman who's sitting here who's yearning to take something back to her organization uh, so that she can really kind of embed it? Yeah, I mean, Look, I think you can work a cause into any company. So whether that's your own small business that you have, that one's easy. You give back a certain percentage. You work with a small organization on how to throw, for example, Fit Week. Um, and so that becomes easy, right? On a larger scale, if you're working for a larger company, you're that smaller fish in a big pond still. Well, that is what happened with MMC. This started because the millennial employees at MMC wanted to do something, they wanted to create change. And that is one of the strengths of being a millennial, right? You want to get out there and do something creative. You want to find your own way. That's all this is, right? It's just finding a way to create a cause within your company. And you can do that from the bottom of the ladder, and you can do that from the top of the ladder. And, and I think another thing is, I think that is great. And I think if you want to convince your company that this is a good thing to do, I mean, millennials are hardwired to make a change in the world, and I believe that all of you will make a tremendous change in the world, and I'm proud of that. Over 50% of the workforce is going to be millennial in the, the end, by the end of this decade. But I think if you want to convince your company, you have to explain to them that, because companies forget, companies are brands, and a brand is something that you stand for. And people buy brands or they join brands because they want to be part of it. It's shared values. Well, you want to be part of a company that has the right value system that's like your own value system. 
You know, I think a great example of that is MAC and what they've done for the World AIDS Fund. MAC was started by two edgy makeup artists who unfortunately got AIDS. And the company could have sponsored a hundred things, but they picked that because it's the DNA of the company and the founders. And they've raised $350 million in the past 20 years. That's phenomenal, and a large part of that success has been generations of people coming up through the ranks that have done it. Kristen, I'd love to start with you just in serving up to this audience a few key takeaways from the partnership yeah. and what others can learn from and, and take with them. I think the key takeaway is don't underestimate millennials, right? The employee who ended up raising the most amount of money, and it was almost $8,000 that she raised individually, um, her name is Rachel, and by doing that, she won a trip to come to Uganda with She's the First. And this girl, she raised $8,000, she took an eight-hour ride over roads that most of you have never seen what they look like. Um, she braved all kinds of hot sun and rain, climbing up a mountain to get to the school every day, and she spent every single spare moment that she had <coughs> learning about the girls and getting to know the girls that MMC had sponsored. So at the end of the day, I think that that's the biggest thing that we need to learn, right? Millennials have so much potential, and we really can't underestimate how much they can achieve. Yeah, millennials rule. There is no question in my mind. Um, I think that's right, and I think you have to involve as many people in your company as you can. I mean, one of the uh, young women in, in our office, this made more money than anything. You won't surprise most of the group here. She held a bachelor auction, and everybody in the office went to that, it seems to me. Um, you want everybody involved, and it's nice if you can somehow tie it into a prize for the people who do raise the most or do the most on it, because it's nice to have a reward at the end of it, but it's also nice to be involved to see the impact that you have on other people. You know, otherwise, write a check and then that's it. But to see the impact you have, like just a, a couple of months ago, we got a letter from the school in Uganda and we now talk to them and, and um, email with them all the time, and they asked if we could possibly raise some funds to get underwear for the girls. And we did. We got 100 pairs of underwear. We had another drive at the agency. Some cute stuff, by the way. I mean, really good. I think they're going to like it. And then um, Kotex is one of our clients. So Kotex, you by Kotex, gave us tons of products for the girls because what happens there is they don't have product when they menstruate, and so therefore they have to stay home and they miss school. And we don't want that, because we know what happens when you miss school. So our wonderful client gave us tons of products and we sent it over there, and the letters from these girls that come back are just, I have them all over my office, you know, like mom put everything on the refrigerator that you ever did, well I have these all over my office, it's great. Everything you guys seem to be saying, you know, individually and collectively on behalf of your organizations really feels like it's hovering in what Mahatma Gandhi said, which is be the change you wish to see in the world. Mm -hmm. I'd love to just close out with if there's a motto or a philosophy that feels related to what we've been discussing here that can kind of be a tweetable, shareable moment for everyone here, um, that would be fabulous. I think mine... It's a hard one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no Thanks. <laughs> um, but I think mine in general in life um, is that there's always a way. And there is. So if this is something that you're passionate about, if joining with a cause, any cause, is something that you're passionate about, bring that to work and make it happen. You can do that. There is always a way. So I'm sitting here thinking this should be something really erudite, right, from Shakespeare or Aristotle or <laughs> even Steve Jobs, maybe Warren Buffett. Uh, so I can't think of any of that. But, you know, there's something I saw on a, a sign painted by an artist in San Francisco, um, and I think it's so apt for women. And the sign that this artist painted said, if you wish to achieve greatness, don't ask for permission. And I think Nike got it right, just do it. And I think the longest journey begins with the first step, so just go out there, don't ask permission, do it. Love it. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Marina. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank so you to Kathleen. Rock on, ladies, rock on. <laughs>